Um, we are on our second tutorial. We are going to be focusing on FM synthesis with Ableton Live's operator device. And what we will be doing is we're going to be making essentially the same tutorial that I recorded last time, except we're going to make that punchy bass sound with frequency modulation synthesis instead of subtractive synthesis. So if you haven't seen the last video, I would recommend going back and watching it because I explained a lot of Ableton Live concepts that I won't be going over again. So I'm gonna assume you know that and assume that you know Ableton a little bit. Um, I also uh, spoke about Ableton's operator. So I'm gonna move a little bit quicker through it and uh, it will be a really good refresher. So we are going to be diving in to Ableton now. All right, so inside Ableton, we are going to Command Shift T open. So you can push Command Shift T as I did, or you can right click and insert MIDI track. So we're going to come over here, make sure we're in the instrument tab, and we want to add a operator, which we can drag and drop, or we can double click. Now when you double click, obviously you want to make sure that your clip is open. So we have our, uh, we have our operator right here, and I'm gonna be playing notes on my computer's keyboard, which if you're not getting that effect, it, you, you need to just make sure that this is on right up here. Um, I find it very useful to play the computer keys because it allows you almost unparalleled functionality when you are um, designing your sounds. So you can play them while you design them and uh, you don't have to leave the computer. So I'm going to be doing that. So if we play some notes, just like in last video, we will um, not hear anything. That's why we have to record enable our track. So just like before, um, we start with a uh, default operator and we have a sine wave. So what we're going to do is the, the last time we, we, we did this, uh, the last time we met for our sound design um, series hangout, we used Ableton's operator to make a punchy bass with subtractive synthesis. Now, Ableton's operator is actually known for frequency modulation synthesis, but it's so robust and so capable that you can do other things with it and even merge the two, which we will see in this video. So I, I wanna say a few things about how we're gonna be using Ableton's operator to achieve frequency modulation. So what I wanna take a look at and I want you to see right here is right now um, we are in the master tab right here. And as I mentioned before, each time you click one of these shells, the, uh, center, uh, the center display changes. So you wanna make sure you're in the master tab and you'll see these different algorithms. And this is how Ableton's operator, um, these are the, the ways that it will process the outputs of these different um, oscillators. So right now, the default operator is this one. Um, what this says and what all of these say is whenever you look at one of these, um, the bottom right here means sound, is, sound will be coming out of, um, in this situation, sound will be coming out of A. And then B, because uh, B is on top of A, um, that means the uh, level or what's coming out of it will be modulating A. And then up here, this means that C will be modulating B and D will be modulating um, uh, C. So it's important to know this because um, I guess it's just important to, to understand frequency modulation a little bit better. So let's, uh, let's start getting a little bit practical and we can come back to these uh, later. Just know that anytime you, you select um, anyone that is on the bottom coming straight out like this, you're actually hearing it, whereas the one on top is actually modulating. So in this one, you've got D, and that will be modulating the outputs of C, B, and A. If you're not following along, it's totally fine. Come back and watch this, because as your, um, as your mind wraps around this a bit more, you're going to want to really know it. And um, so if you're not following everything, that's completely fine. I want this to be very comprehensive. 
Um, so right now, if we click on A, we're hearing a sine wave. Now, if we go into B and we start turning up the level of B, which is important, we're turning up the level of B, not the, not the sound of B, you'll start hearing it change. Now, you'll also want to note that in B, we also have a sine wave, which is completely fine. So listen to what happens. Okay, you got that sine wave. But now listen to what happens when I start turning up B. So when I turn up B, you're actually not hearing B, meaning you aren't physically hearing the oscillator, this sine wave. What you're hearing is its effect on A, and that's how you get frequency modulation. So now you've got that. So now you're getting that uh, you're getting that sound. And if you turn up C, C will be now modulating B. So now check out what this sounds like. So that is basically the frequency modulation type sound. Now we are going to be using that to make our punchy bass sound. And just a little bit of quick history on frequency modulation synthesis. Um, the first frequency modulation synthesizers, they did not have filters, which because we're using operator, we can use. Um, in subtractive synthesis, we basically start um, with a bright waveform and then we use the filter to manipulate its brightness over time with an envelope. But in frequency modulation synthesis, we actually use the envelope to fade in or out the effect of the modulated signal. So right now we're gonna add, just to demonstrate this, we're gonna add an attack. So what this attack says, and I'm gonna turn up the level of B, what this attack says is that over the course of a mi or, excuse me, of about one second, it's, it's, um, the, the level will be faded in um, up to this amount over one second, and because the sustain is up, it will hold that, and then the release will say it, how its effect will dial off over time. In A, our envelope is just open, so we're gonna hear it. So check, check out that you'll, so I'm gonna hold down um, some notes and listen to it fade in, and then it's gonna hold, and then it's gonna sustain. So to illustrate it some more, let's let's lower the decay a little bit. And um, now you're gonna, after it hits its peak, you're gonna notice it dropping down a little bit. Let's give it a little bit more decay to illustrate this. So now how it rests lower when it finally does sustain. So that's not really a bass sound, but now that you know that, we're going to apply what we applied previously to our sound. So we're going to give it no attack because we want it to be punchy. And let's play what we have right now. Okay, doesn't sound like a bass. So I'm going to transpose it down two octaves. And I'm going to come back here into oscillator B, and I am going to manipulate this to get a sound I like. If it was all the way up, it sustains which maybe you want, because you want something like that. But just to illustrate this, because um, most bass sounds will have an attack and then they'll die off and then they'll maybe hold at a certain level, we're gonna have that. Listen to how nice that sounds. So we're basically done. <laughs> that's it. Like that's 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 all you really have to do. Everything else is just having extra fun. Like you don't need to use everything in here. You could also use the filter because take a listen to this sound right now. You can also use a filter too. And then you can go into filter, add an envelope, and you just get extra sound possibilities. But you don't need a filter in frequency modulation synthesis. Um, frequency modulation synthesis was actually, um, it was a different approach to sounds. So what this says is you, um, is rather than starting with a bright waveform and then having to use a uh, filter control to uh, manipulate it, it basically says in our architecture through modulators, we are going to um, give access to the brightness of a sound over time um, through envelopes um, with varying degrees of modulation and only using sine waves. So it actually, you, you don't have to use um, even sine waves, but through those sine waves, you can get any sound you want. So 
we don't we what we can do is we can say let's do something different or let's do a little bit more let's 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 throw oscillator c into the mix now here's a really nice sound design tip so we're in c Look at the envelope. This means we're hearing its effect all the time, but I don't want that. I want a little punch, a real punchy punch to punch through. So let's bring this in. Hear that? Now let's turn C off. Turn C on. Hear that little click? You can always add that to give little punches at the start and it makes it cut through and sound good and cut through, especially on phones. So we're basically done. Um, it's a, this is a shorter tutorial. Um, what's nice about Ableton's operator is you can, you don't even have to use it that way. You can actually use it with the filter. So if I go into C and I go into B and I turn these all up, so everything is up, that doesn't sound good, right? But let's use the filter exactly like we did before. And listen to that. And then we can adjust the filter envelope to get a different sound. So just like before, so what we did is through, in, in, in what I just showed you, what we did is we used um, operator with FM synthesis, and we got a very bright waveform just now. I'll turn filter off. But then we used filter just like we did before to give it that envelope to basically do kind of what we did in subtractive synthesis. So this is going to give you a more nuanced take. Um, I did that last step really just to show you how many options you have. Um, in the next video, we are going to be staying on operator because I really want you to understand this in synthesizer theory because we're going to be building. We're going to be moving on to analog. We're going to be moving on to wavetable and then also to sampler after that. So the next video is going to be using operator again and we're going to be going back Back to subtractive synthesis and we are going to be creating a pad sound a pad is like if you hold down a lot of keys you know you're playing like a long sustained sound like chords it's a sound that is meant to when you hold it down to um, sustain over time uh, very great for ambient music so we're gonna create that in operator using subtractive synthesis and then after that we're gonna do the same thing in FM synthesis and that will all be an operator then we will be moving to analog, I'll be teaching you how to do the same things. The reason why we're focusing on these different kinds of sounds right now is because there's really only two types of sounds as I see it. There's staccato sounds and legato sounds. So staccato is like a bass sound, like a boop, 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 and legato is like a long sustained sound. So when you understand that, it basically takes these infinite possibilities that we have in our software programs and it, 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 it condenses it down to a digestible size, which, give, which gives you more power as the sound designer. I have so many tutorials coming. Thanks for the continued support. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, keep uh, commenting, liking, subscribing. And even though I'm, uh, I've got all these videos that I'm going to be putting out, I want to also know your feedback as to what other videos you want to see. We're also going to very soon start doing Ableton Live sound design hangouts. So maybe like every Wednesday night or Thursday night, I will release a video where I just say, listen, I'm just gonna do some cool sound design stuff and I'm gonna explain everything I'm doing to the sound so you can follow along and also create your own sound. So if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Show the love and um, we're gonna be releasing these probably maybe every other day, which is what I wanna do until I've literally covered everything. So I appreciate you and have a great day.